Hey everyone, my name is Jay Edry and welcome to my Flash Video Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about shapes, symbols, and tweening. Um, in the last video I went about all the basic tools on the left hand side over here for Flash. Today I'm just going to be going over a few of them again just to give you a more in-depth look into some of the tools. And then I'll be talking more about the difference between shapes and symbols. So let's get right to it. To start off a new scene, once again you can go ahead and click Action Script 3.0. To talk more about ActionScript 3.0, this is the new scripting language that Flash is using. You can still click ActionScript 2.0 and still get everything working, but uh, I just prefer to stick to the ActionScript 3.0 in case I'm going to be doing some coding for my scene. So go ahead and click ActionScript 3.0 and you'll be brought to your scene. So let's go ahead and start talking about drawing your characters. I'm going to go ahead and click the brush tool. If you want to select the brush tool a little bit quicker, you can hit the B key and as you see beside the brush tool, it says the letter B in open and close brackets. That means that the hotkey to select the brush tool is B. But notice that also underneath that, the spray brush tool also has B in brackets. What that means is, if I hit B once, I will get to the brush tool, but if I hit it again, if you look in the tools panel, the brush tool will then be changed into the spray brush tool. So keep in mind, whenever you hit the B button, make sure that your tool is actually the brush tool and not the spray brush tool. So now I have my brush tool selected, I can go ahead and turn on pressure sensitivity and start drawing. Now I'm going to start drawing something simple. I'm going to first select black for my brush color and I'm going to draw a character that's just composed of a circle. And to make it more exciting I'm going to add some eyes and a mouth. and maybe make him a little bit wonky. So you should all pretty much know how to do this from the previous tutorial video. But what I'm going to do now is go select the eraser tool and if I scroll over it you can see that it says E in brackets and what that means is obviously that if you hit the E key you'll turn to the eraser tool. Now this eraser is too big for what I want to use it for. You can go ahead and click the open square bracket to shrink the brush size and you can hit the closed square bracket to increase brush size. Now you'll notice after hitting the closed square bracket that the brush turned into a square brush and shrunk again. That's because if you look to the left over here on the very bottom those are your different brushes that you can select from. And when you hit the close square bracket, it goes down this list, and when you hit the open square bracket, it'll move up the list. So I'm looking for the really thin brush up here, so I'm going to hit the open square bracket until I reach this eraser brush. So there you go, I have it selected. So right here, right where I have the circle closed off, I'm going to erase really slightly a little bit of the line. So if I zoom in, you will now see that this little area right here is not closed off. It's almost an entryway. And I'll explain why I did that in a bit. Now what you guys just saw was me zooming in using the hotkeys. The hotkeys for zooming in is control and the equals key. And to zoom out is control and the minus key. And I'll be using those extensively along with the space bar to move the scene around. So let's go ahead and color our characters in using the paint bucket tool. So I'm going to select my paint bucket tool. And as you can see, you could also use the K key to use it as a hotkey for the paint bucket tool. And select the color I want by selecting the brush color. So for the inside of the mouth, I would like a really dark red. Now for the teeth and the eyes, I'm going to pick this color right above the bottom right color. So it's not a white, it's almost a yellowish white. And I think that will work well. And now I'm going to color in the face. And for the face, I'm going to pick this beige light color over here. I'm going to color in the eyes. And maybe for the actual face, I'm going to pick a lighter color to distinguish the eyes from the actual face. Now, when I actually try to click on the face, you'll notice that the paintbrush is not filling in the face. And the reason it's doing that is because what I showed you earlier, we have that little gap in this area. Now, there's a few ways you can go ahead and fix that problem. The first way you can do it is go over here and you'll see what's called the gap size selection. When you have your paint bucket selected, this icon will show up. You can hit this icon and it will show you how you want to fill up your closed shapes. 
So you can see we have a don't close gaps selection, close small gap selection, and so on. Because that gap over here that I created was a really small gap, I could probably select this close small gap selection and click in the inside and it will fill it up. Using any gap size besides the don't close gaps can cause problems that you might run into where it won't fill a certain edge or a crevice. I usually try not to use the close small gaps. What I would usually do is go right into where the problem area is and I'm just going to undo the color I pasted. And when I find the problem, I'll just fill it in with the color that I used for the rest of the line. And go back to the paint bucket tool, select the color of the face that I chose, and use the don't close gaps. I usually find this method the safest, and I recommend that you guys do the same, but feel free to use the close gaps if you enjoy it. Now for the eyeballs, I'm going to make them, um, let's see, a dark orange. And I'm going to go back into the brush tool, select a little bit of white to add a little bit of glare on the eyes to make them look a little bit better. And there you go. There's going to be the character I'm going to be working with. Now I'm going to use the selection tool, and the selection tool's hockey is V. So I could just hit V to select the selection tool. I'm going to select my whole character and just shrink him for a second and put him over to the side and copy him using the control C control V keys and moving him over and to deselect my selection I just hit the escape key now we have two different drawings of the exact same face I'm going to be talking a little bit now about shapes and symbols and the difference between them so now we're left with two faces that are all composed of shapes we know that they're composed of shapes because when we click them the colors become grayed out and we could also manipulate shapes by moving the colors around or drawing on top of the shape if we like. So I'm going to do what I did. So now what we're going to do is turn the face on the right over here into a symbol. To do that, select the selection tool by hitting the V key and drag a box around the whole face and let go. That will leave us with the face fully selected. Right click it and go to convert to symbol. A pop up will come up asking you for the properties you'd like for the symbol. It's important to give your symbol a name so that when you have a bunch of symbols, you're able to distinguish between them. For the type, now this is very important. Remember that you always change the type to graphic. Graphics are the easiest to use when you want to manipulate objects in terms of animation. I'm not going to go into the differences between movie clip and button and graphic, but just for now, always stick to graphic. Now the registration point tells you where you want to rotate the object around. Right now you see that the registration point is right in the center. What that means is that when I rotate the object using the transformation tool, it'll rotate around the center. And if I pick the top left one, then the object will rotate around the top left. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the top left registration point, even though what I really do want is the middle registration point. The reason I'm doing that is to show you how to fix it later if you would like to change a registration point. So go ahead and click OK. So now we've turned one of the faces into a symbol. A good way to think of a symbol is that it's a group of shapes and or symbols that are encompassed inside a box. Since all these shapes are inside one box, I can just grab the box and move it around. As opposed to the shape, if I would like to move the shape around, I would have to select the whole thing and drag it. If I try to manipulate the shape the same that I would a symbol, such as just clicking, holding, and dragging, you can see that all it does is remove the color that I selected. I'm going to undo that. Symbols are also different from shapes in that you can animate them using tweening. I'm not going to go into that just yet but symbols are what you're going to be animating most. So now let's say that you like your symbol but you want to change the eye a bit. To do that you would have to go inside the box or inside the symbol and manipulate it in there. So let's go ahead and double click on the symbol to go inside of it. Now if you look in the top left corner you'll notice that we have a face tab right over here. This is a graph showing you where we are in our scene. So we're in our scene one inside the face since we're inside the box of the face we can't actually go and manipulate the shape that we created earlier this is because we're inside the box of the face and we can only manipulate what's inside of that box so if I'd like to I can go ahead and change the eyeball around so here's a good tip let's say I want to manipulate the eyeball and I want to zoom in right on the eyeball it can be difficult to zoom in and then find the eyeball so what you can do is if you want to zoom in on a particular position Use your selection tool by hitting the V key, click what you would want to zoom in on, 
and then press Control equals to zoom in on it and you will zoom in exactly on the selection that you created. So now to select this eyeball I'm going to use my lasso tool and make a quick selection around the eyeball Now I'd like to drag this eyeball over to this side of his eye. If I do that, you'll notice some of the yellow kind of drags along with it, which is not what we want. I'm going to undo that. To deselect the yellow area over here, you can use your selection tool by hitting the V key and shift select that area. That will reverse the selection that you had earlier. Now we have the eyeball perfectly selected. We could go ahead and drag it over to the left side. You notice anything under the shape is actually blank. We're going to have to fill that up with a yellow later. But first, let's complete the black side of the eyeball that we had going on here. I'm going to select my brush tool, increase my brush size, make sure I have black selected in my fill color, and color it in. And I'm going to go with that's okay for now. Now to fill this little area right here, I'm going to select my paint bucket tool by hitting the K key and I would like to select a yellow that's over here. Now we can go ahead and click the fill tool and then click over here to the yellow but there's a quicker way. The quickest way to select colors and go back to the paint bucket tool is to hit the I key. When you hit the I key you'll be brought up with the paint selection tool. Once you click on the color selection that you like you'll be brought right back to the paint bucket tool that you had selected earlier and you can go ahead and click the empty space that you'd like to color in and we're done. Now let's zoom out. Now one thing that I didn't mention is anything that's outside of the symbol that you're in will be grayed out. This is to show you they cannot manipulate the objects outside of your symbol. Also I want to point out is that within a symbol it has its own timeline, but we're not going to get into that now. So now that we're done inside the face symbol, I want to move back out. You can do that in two ways. One way is to click the scene tab over here, and the other way is to go back to your selection tool hitting the V key and double clicking outside of any shape or symbol inside of your symbol. So I know that sounds a little confusing but double click anywhere that there isn't anything such as here. And I'm back outside and I can manipulate the shape again. So now that I briefly talked about the difference between shapes and symbols I'm gonna go ahead and delete this shape. And we're only left with now the one face symbol. So now I'm gonna talk about registration points. To see them in action, go ahead and select the symbol that you created and then select the free transformation tool on the top left. As you can see the hotkey for that is Q. Go outside of one of the corners until the rotation symbol is presented. Hold click and drag around the object and it will rotate. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute Jay, you said the registration point was going to be on the top left. And it should be. But Flash allows you to move the rotation point away from the registration point. You're going to want to make sure this never happens when you're animating your characters. So the rotation point not being on top of the registration point on the top left over here is a bad thing. I know that my registration points on the top left by using the selection tool and clicking my object you will see that there is a plus symbol where the registration point should be. To pop the rotation point on top of the registration point simply select your object, hit the Q key or the free transformation tool and double click this white circle that represents the rotation point and your rotation point will pop right where it should be. You want to make sure that you have your rotation point on top of your registration point because it will solve a lot of problems that flash animators run into. But I'll demonstrate that later. So now if I go outside one of the corners on the character until the rotation icon is presented and I click drag around, you could see that the object is rotating around the proper registration point. Once again, if you accidentally move the rotation point by hold clicking on the white circle in the transformation tool and dragging it away, your rotation point will not be where it should be. This will cause a lot of problems in the future, so remember, whenever you see this white circle, make sure to double click it just to make sure that it's on top of the registration point. So how do I change the registration point to be in the center of the character, you say? The answer might be a little counterintuitive, but that's how Flash goes about fixing the registration point. To change the position of registration point, go inside of the symbol by double clicking the symbol. And now remember, once you're inside of your symbol, you're now controlling the shape of the character you created. What you're going to want to do is actually move the shape on top of the registration point, which is this plus symbol over here. So to do that is simple. Select your entire character by click dragging right across it with your selection tool and hold click and drag the character so that that plus symbol is right in the center where the nose should be. Now press escape to deselect your character and now you can double click outside of the character to go back outside of the symbol. And now if I use my free transformation tool and I rotate around, you will see that it's rotating from the proper point. And once again, I'm going to double click the white circle just to make sure that it's on top of the registration point. 
So now we have our round ball character fully rigged. We can start animating him a little bit. Let's start with something simple like a bounce. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the character is going to be animating inside the entire white space of the scene right here. So I'm going to want to maybe a little bit smaller so he could jump a little higher. And I'm going to drag him down to the bottom of the scene and that's where he's going to start his jump from. Now this animation is going to be pretty simple. All I'm going to make him do is bounce up and down. So to do that we're going to have to start introducing the timeline. In the timeline let's stretch it to about frame 50. Click on the gray box underneath frame 50 and hit the F5 key. And now if you hit the enter key you'll see that animation is playing. But nothing's moving. That's because we only have one keyframe created. Now since we're only going to make him bounce up and down, we know that he's going to start in the same position and end in the same position. So let's add another keyframe that looks exactly like this keyframe at the end. Let's click on the last frame. And since the symbol is already in the place that we want it to be, we could just go ahead and click the F6 key to create a keyframe right there. And you'll see a black dot is created to represent a keyframe. Now we're going to add a keyframe right in the center of the animation. And this keyframe is where he's going to be at his highest in his jump. So let's go ahead and press F6 to create a keyframe there and drag him up. Now it's important that we created the keyframe first before dragging the character because if we didn't then we would have been manipulating the keyframe that's on the first frame. Now if we play our animations you'll see that we have him on the bottom and then he pops to the top and pops to the bottom. We want it to be a lot smoother than that. So what we want to add now to smooth it out is called motion tweening. What motion tweening is, is it solves the motion for each symbol being moved. So to add motion tweening, highlight any frames that you want the motion tween to affect, right click it, and go to classic tween. Now there's also another option called motion tween. For all my lessons, we're only going to be touching on classic tweening. And when I work in animation, I usually only stick to classic tweening. So select it, and you'll see that our gray area for our frames have turned purple. This symbolizes that we have motion tweens created. So go ahead and now click your enter key to see your animation. Not bad, but looks a little jerky. I'm not going to go into the physics of animation right now, but really quickly, we want the ball to move really fast in the beginning of the frame, slow down near the end where it gets to the top, and then as it's coming down, move slowly down and then speed up. To do that, we need easing. So select the frame you would like to ease, and then in the properties panel, under tweening, you could see the option ease. I'm going to click the number once and type 100. That's going to be an ease out. So if I play back the animation, the animation moves fast and then slows as it nears the other frame. For this tween, we're going to want an ease in. For ease ins, you're going to have to click the value and enter minus 100. So let's play back our animations now. It looks a little bit more realistic. But for my liking, I would like there to be less frames so the ball bounces a lot quicker. To remove frames, Click one of the frames you would like to remove, hold shift and click F5 and that will start removing the frames. So I'm going to have only 20 frames for the going up area and only 20 frames for the going down area. Let's try playing that back again. Not bad. I realized that I rushed through a lot of animation principles such as tweening, but I'll be talking about that in future videos. But pretty much ease in is slowing down to speeding up and ease out is speeding up to slowing down. Now that your animation is complete, you can go and export it out. To export it, go to File, Export, and Export Movie. Find the directory that you want to export your movie to, and make sure that you're on the Swift setting as the file type. Label your movie, and hit Save. And now if I go back to my desktop, you'll see that I have the video right here. You can just double click it and you can watch your video in all its glory. And that would be all. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Happy animating!